Hello, today's progress. I've got the characters uh, acting correctly now. So here we've got, don't have any enemies yet, but the turn, or, turn order works and you can set the warriors, uh, set the characters up as you see fit. So here we've got a warrior, and these are the actions he's currently set to do. Attack and then jump back. Now these aren't the actions that he does on his turn. These are the actions he does on the enemy's turn. If the enemy gets within range, the warrior will automatically attack the enemy and then jump back. And he'll repeat that uh, as many times as an enemy gets within range, uh, and he still has energy left over. So if, uh, if we move him to a blue tile, that's what he'll do on his turn. If we move him to a yellow tile, that's too far, and he won't be able to act uh, off turn. He'll have to wait until his next turn uh, instead of doing any of this stuff uh, on the enemy's turn. Let's go ahead and change it to defend. Defend boosts your defense every time uh, an enemy, every time that we attack and we then defend. And defend boosts our defense. So the more enemies attack us, then the higher our defense gets which is nice. So we'll go ahead and go over here. Now this is a rogue. The rogue is set to slash and then hide, but we can go ahead and change that out because we don't want the rogue to be on the front line. We'll make him attack attackers. So now, whenever an enemy gets close to the uh, warrior, the warrior will attack and then defend, boosting the warrior's defense. If the enemy then chooses to attack, which they almost all will, the rogue will instantly attack with a knife across the, uh, you know, across the lanes and hit that enemy. And then hide. We can change that to changing rails or robbing. Uh, and it, so you can see how this develops pretty quickly into a scenario where you're planning out what your characters are going to do on the enemy's turn. And you're choosing their classes, their jobs, um, to complement each other because you can change them to whatever jobs you would like. Uh, you can also customize them with equipment and uh, inherit a couple of abilities from various other jobs. Um, so this isn't dummied in. This is all fully functional, aside from the missing enemies. Uh, so if we go back out to scene view, you can see here I've got the class definition. And all of the abilities that they have are defined right here. And they're not, uh, they're not dummied in. You have the full uh, full thing here. So change rails is the effect type of change rails. On the other hand, the slash end is the effect type of direct attack with an energy cost of two. Uh, for some reason it's set to trigger type of passive, which we don't want. We want enemy on rail within X, and we'll set X equal to two. And we'll make sure that we can actually hit the enemy by making it so that it attacks the tile, the two tiles in front of him. Uh, the tile in front and the tile beyond that. So here you can see that now we've just set up the attack. Oh, actually, I don't think you can see that far down. Uh, I can't lift the window high enough. Anyhow, we set it up so that the attack will now actually attack. Um, so this isn't dummy stuff. Oh, and similarly, the, uh, the classes themselves have a variety of stats you can tweak, and you can change their level ups, uh, what happens during the level ups. Um, now, not all of that stuff is functional. In fact, almost none of it is, but the framework is there, and I'm going to add in enemies next, which I think I'll do tomorrow. And at that point, I'll be able to have something similar to an actual game, and I'll just start developing uh, whatever uh, uh, features make it so that it, it's playable. And that's what I did today.